Hi, my name is Lynn Thompson. I'm an educator at the Courier Museum of Art. I'd like to invite you to look at a painting with me by Janet Bleakin. This is a time to slow down and look carefully at a piece. Take your time, ask questions, and share thoughts and ideas with a loved one as you look together. Feel free to pause and rewind as much as you'd like. This piece, titled Little Birches with Audubon, is a large painting, 72 by 72 inches. What is one of the first things that you see when you look at this piece? I notice the birch trees that split the painting from top to bottom. These skinny trees are bare in this winter landscape, and although grouped together, they seem a bit lonely. One tree has a bright pink ribbon tied around it. Why do you think that is there? Another part of the painting that creates a divide, but on the horizontal, is a row of rocks. Why do you think those rocks are there? Do you notice anything else on the ground? It appears that a postcard or magazine image has been left on the ground. The image is of an angry looking wolf. I wouldn't want to come across him while out on a walk. Why do you think the artist put a mini image in her painting? I think she's paying homage to John James Audubon, a naturalist and painter of the 19th century who's known for his realistic and detailed drawings of birds. While he's known for his birds, Audubon also sketched other animals. Imagine you were walking in this landscape. What sounds would you hear? What would you feel? What would you do if you found a pink ribbon on a tree or an image on the ground? The artist of this painting, Janet, grew up in a small town in Western Pennsylvania. Her family shared the home with her grandmother, Clara. When Janet was three, she drew a performing seal that convinced her grandmother she would become a great artist. Although Janet's parents weren't much concerned with her development as an artist and were much more interested in Janet finding something that she could do that would eventually lead her to a job. However, Janet's grandmother was very persistent and bought her granddaughter art supplies and paid for private lessons with a high school art teacher. The grandmother really encouraged Janet to become an artist. Eventually, Janet graduated from Penn State University, majoring in fine arts and minoring in humanities with an emphasis on religion. Janet often creates a series of paintings that explore questions that she finds compelling. This painting that you are looking at here was in an exhibition at the Courier that explored the question of why local farmers set the mountain on fire twice in the 19th century. Do you see any evidence of that question in this painting? The background of the landscape seems so much darker and more barren to me compared to the middle and foreground. Why do you think that is? I hope you have enjoyed looking at this piece and talking to a loved one about this piece and what you did or maybe didn't like about it. Now I invite you to join my colleague, Corey, who's going to lead you in a fun and easy art activity. Hello, I'm Corey Lyford from the Courier Museum of Art, and I'm so excited to do a relaxed and fun art making lesson with you today. We're going to be making landscapes full of layers, patterns, and color. And please remember that there is no wrong way to make your art. Your piece can look however you want it to look. And the intention of this is really to relax and have fun and get creative. So to make my landscape today, which will feature a colorful background with birch trees in the foreground, I'll be using two pieces of white paper, scissors, glue, 
a black marker, and some crayons. If you don't have a black marker or if you don't have crayons, any coloring tools that you have around the house will work. So those could be colored pencils, it could be paint. Any of that will work very nicely for this project. I'm going to start by creating the birch trees that will end up being at the front of my landscape. So to do this, I'm going to use one of my pieces of paper along with my black marker. I'm going to start by drawing with the black marker across my paper and I'm going to make a black mark across the length of the whole paper from left to right. I'm then going to add another mark and another and you'll notice that some of these go all the way across my paper some only go part way across some are just in the middle and as I keep adding marks I'm going to experiment with some lines being thicker and some lines being thinner this is all to create the black and white pattern that we see on birch trees. And no two trees are the same in their markings. So as I keep adding more and more lines, I want to add different amounts of thickness and different amounts of white space in between the black marks. And I'm going to slowly fill my whole paper with these marks. Once I have the amount of black markings on the paper that I like, and again, yours does not have to look like mine. You could have as many or as few black lines as you would like. I'm now going to take my scissors and I'm going to start cutting the paper. I'm doing this because these will become collage pieces to represent birch trees. So I'm going to cut one strip of paper off the end and then another and another and some of these will be thick and some of them will be a bit thinner that's to represent different sizes of birch trees some of these might have very thick trunks and some might be a bit thinner and for my thinnest pieces I'll eventually use them as branches so I'm going to keep cutting until my whole piece of paper has been cut into these pieces for trees and I'm going to set those aside. Now for my background, I'm going to use my other piece of white paper along with my crayons. For this, I'm going to choose crayon colors that might represent an outdoor landscape with some colors representing trees and leaves, grass, and sky. So for those I've chosen some blues, greens, and yellows. I also am choosing some colors that for me will represent different flowers and plants that would grow in my landscape scene. So I'm choosing some purples, oranges, reds, and pinks. But you can use whatever colors you would like to use. I'm going to start at the bottom by adding with my green crayon just a small patch of color. And this is an organic shape. I just want to get some color onto my paper. And then I'm going to select another color. I'm going to use a second shade of green. And I'm going to add another patch of color next to it. So in filling my background, I want to create interesting shapes by adding these areas of color with my crayon. No two are going to look exactly the same. And I'm just adding color and some interesting areas to my background paper. So I'm going to keep adding these two different shades of green until I fill the bottom of my paper, which is representative of a grassy ground. As I start moving up towards the middle of the page, I'm going to incorporate other colors like reds and pinks that are again representative of flowers and other plants that I might find in my landscape. 
I'm going to add some orange, some yellow, a darker pink color. And I'll also keep incorporating greens as I work my way up, which are representative of taller grasses and leaves. I will keep adding more and more colors. And as I go, I like experimenting with what shapes I'm creating out of these patches of color. Some are long and skinny, some are a bit more round, some may be more square. I continue my way up the page with my color palette. And as I start reaching the upper third of my paper, I'm going to begin incorporating my shades of blue, which are representative of the sky. So with the blue and a few more of my colors that I had already been using, I will keep filling in until my whole background page is full of color. At this point, I'm ready to add my birch trees. So I'm going to take one of my strips of birch paper that I already created and my glue stick. I'm going to add lots of glue to the back of the paper and I'm going to put it onto my composition. I'm gonna give this a good push down so it's really stuck to my paper and I have my first birch tree against the colorful background. I'm going to add a second tree and a third, always using plenty of glue. If you didn't have a glue stick or liquid glue, you could also do this with tape. Anything that will stick the two pieces of paper together will work just fine. I'm now going to start incorporating some branches. So I'm going to take some of those thinner pieces of birch paper that I cut, and I'm going to cut them into smaller sections for the branches and I'm going to start adding those to some of my tree trunks. I'm going to add more branches and trunks until I've filled a good amount of my paper, but I still like how much of my background color that I can still see. I end up with about half birch tree to half colorful background. And that's the project. Again, this can look however you'd like it to look. It doesn't have to look like the piece I've created here. We want to have fun and be creative and express ourselves on paper. I hope you enjoy doing this art activity with me. Thank you so much.